morning everyone and welcome to my new YouTube channel where I'll be sharing behind the scenes videos, practical reviews of photography equipment and uh, all the other little bits in between that go along with uh, someone working in the photography industry here in London. Today I'm shooting around East London and shooting some football bits with Soccer Bible. Uh, I'm going to take you along on that, shoot some BTS and uh, maybe go through a few things like the equipment we'll be using and then maybe a little bit of my workflow at the end and then hopefully show you guys some good quality final images. So we're just in the studio here today. We actually have a booking in about an hour's time but I'm just getting the clothes steamed for today's shoot and uh, here's some of the gear we'll be using. So camera wise it's fairly straightforward. Got the 5D Mark IV 24 to 105 lens with the 70 to 200 2.8. A uh, couple of film cameras and stuff in there just in case there's any time to kind of get some extras. Got a tether cable, but I think I'm just going to shoot to card. And there's my card reader, and I need to pack away my batteries. Using a little bit of flash today to light the subject, to have the subject backlit, and then have the flash kicking in from the front. So we have the Profoto B1X, not shot with this before, so that should be interesting. We've got the sink bump there and just use, using the beauty dish, maybe with a grid. So let's get cracking. So, so fast forward six hours and here we are, still in the same place. Today has been a bit of a nightmare. The model didn't turn up. It's kind of unprecedented, really, because it was a paid job. And we're hanging about and initially the call time had changed to an hour and a half earlier, so we gave them the benefit of the down hang around. Uh, spoke to his agent um, and he said he was on his way, he was stuck in traffic. Three and a half hours passed and still nothing from the model. We basically had to cancel. Spoke to his agent, cancelled the shoot, which is a massive inconvenience when you take into account that this project is due for a tight turnover, uh, ideally finished and retouched by uh, late this evening or tomorrow morning to go live on the website and obviously not a great um, start to this YouTube channel but I thought uh, I might as well put it in you know these this is the reality of it is there's highs and lows and uh, it's very frustrating rather than down tools and end for the day I'm going to head out and get some pr interesting hopefully product shots uh, so at least the client has something for first thing tomorrow morning spoke to them uh, and everything is totally fine. They, they really understand. It's really frustrating, really annoying. It's put a bit of a sour uh, taste on the day, really, to be honest. Maybe I can talk you through my workflow, at least well, get some value out of this, the first day of the new YouTube channel, of the new vlogs, and it won't be a complete waste of time. So, let's go. Okay guys, so here is a quick overview. First of all, open capture one, obviously new session and I usually start with year, month and day. That way when I go to arrange by name every job is in order. So we open up and I will find the capture folder in the library and then I will right click and capture, uh, show the capture folder in Finder. I do this because it's easier and quicker to create multiple shot folders. So shot one, shot two, shot three. The great thing with capture one is it's a reflection of finder so we go back to capture one there and now you have shot one, shot two, shot three. This is one of the reasons why I use capture one instead of Lightroom. I'll insert the card, import the images and at the end it gives you the option to just either click OK or take me there. So click take me there rid of those activities just generating thumbnails and as you can see like a dumbass I have forgotten to format my card so some old jobs on there from the other day highlight those backspace delete them all continue they'll stick around in the trash but that's okay with capture one you've got your user styles so these are previous styles that you've that I've used for maybe uh, old shoots I like to store these have a flick through it's a great way of um, instantly referring to maybe a style that you've used in the past or something that can be then adapted to what you're shooting now. So I've gone with this one. The L's are a bit too bright here so I'll just select the colour range in colour editor 
and just bring down the saturation like this, maybe like this up a little bit, like this down, play around with it and just see what works. Go back to my settings here and play around with the exposure. A lot of these shots I'm going to go quite dark with quite a lot of contrast, uh, really make the trainers or the boots in this case pop. And with Capture One, you can copy that with the up arrow there in the top right and then select all and press the down arrow and that will paste over all of the images. Now obviously some of these might not be quite right, they might have been shot at slightly different exposures, so I'll have a quick uh, flick through at this point and uh, just tweak any where the settings haven't quite matched my camera settings. So some of these are a bit dark as you can see, so I'll select one and adjust those settings and then select the whole bunch from that uh, section of shots and just paste it over them all. These ones I think work a bit better, a bit darker for the back of the boot here. So I've adjusted the exposure down, but obviously as I've pasted that dark exposure on the others, we've got a bunch here which are now too dark. So I'll adjust my settings, copy and paste over. I'm whizzing through it here guys, as you can see. There's a large selection there and pasting the brighter settings onto that one. If there's any points in this video that you want me to elaborate on, please let me know in the comments. One of the trickiest things I find with shooting boots or trainers is to actually find some character in essentially what is a one foot square space. Because that's all that you're going to be getting in the shot is this tight, tight crop of the architecture. So you could see some great architecture somewhere and think, oh, that would make a great photo. But when you actually fill the frame, do you get a sense of what's going on there? Is the character of the surfaces working with the character of the boots or trainer? Really tricky. Here we just have some uh, crowd railings stacked up against a wall around Liverpool Street. When you tight cropley into that, it really gives the uh, space a bit of character. It's got this sort of steely, futuristic look to it. So I shot a few variants of a couple of the different boots here. Some worked, some didn't. The back of the boot there worked nicely. Just pinch the uh, darks and the whites there to give a bit of contrast. Play with the mids, maybe raise them up a little bit. And from this point, I think I had pretty much all of the shots. I wandered around sort of central London here to find any other interesting textures, but I'm not sure if this tiling quite works. So now that I've narrowed it down, starring the images as I go by pressing one, two, three, or four, or five, I usually just initially begin with a one star. I've arranged them by rating here, and I'm just going through and doing some final tweaks, cropping to square. The client likes to crop, uh, crop all their Instagram posts to square. So I'm just seeing what works and what doesn't. And if it doesn't quite work, I'll either zero the image. What you can do with Capture One is press Enter to set the Compare Variant and uh, Command B, Command T to get rid of the browser and tools and you go full screen. So I'm just playing around with the shadows here. The background is a little bit too bright for my liking but I quite like the contrast in the boots. So I might need to go back to Photoshop later and uh, even them out with a brush tool. Got some shots on some nice marble, a little bit of depth of field there with the pavement below. It's quite nice and flush, thought that worked quite well, especially with that pop of yellow from the boot. The rain on the surface giving a little bit of texture there. And again, just looking through, selecting a couple of images, seeing them side by side really kind of helps decide. It's not too much difference in there. Maybe the back of the boot crept over the edge of the, the paving there, which I quite like that sort of intersection. So I've gone through and I've starred the ones that I prefer on capture one it's real easy you just press one or two stars one thing I want to do with this boot here is export it as a TIFF because I want to bring that into Photoshop later and uh, adjust the darks in the left boot there because I want to bring that up a little bit and I also want to um, darken the back the background as for the rest I can select all those and export at the half size. These are just going for web. Initially, I was thinking about high res there, but seven megabytes, but it is just web and social. So export the half size, put in the subfolder for web, and preset the format naming of the images for web. 
so the client knows when they view the image and they view the file name that these are resized for them. I'll tweak the quality a little bit, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference really when viewing the image. Something around 3 megs is a good size. You can even export 1 meg or smaller. So I'll bring this one, this TIFF file, into Photoshop. So I'll tweak a little bit in Camera Raw. I'll try and uh, flatten the image a little bit so the information is there before I open it up into Photoshop. First thing I always do is Command J to duplicate the layer. And you can see there's a little bit of detail on the inside the boot there that I want to bring out. The way I like to work to bring out details and shadows and highlight and bring back highlights is just invert a curves layer. And then with the eraser, you can see it's beginning to pop out a little bit. I usually like to use the rubber at uh, about 30% opacity, the top left there. Usually on skin I'll go as low as sort of 10 to 15% opacity, just to really be intricate about it. But on a flat surface like this, the boot, we can work on this a bit quicker. Now for the background. Get dark curves there, invert that, big brush. And there's definitely quicker ways of doing this, and I'll paint around that, and you can see that's getting a little bit darker there. The big brush can't work, get as close to that boot without it leaving a, a halo, so I'll work a little bit closer yeah. and bring back the fill so it's not too obvious. It's probably only obvious to myself because in the end I'll be the only one who sees it in its raw state. You can see that halo is still there around the, uh, around the boot. So just get a smaller brush and work into that a little bit. I want you to put the uh, fill down. Even though it's a quick method, it's not really that obvious. That yellow is still popping a, a little bit. So I'll bring down the saturation in a different layer. Mask that off and just copy the mask from the layer below. And boom, there we go. Just bring down that yellow just a little bit. I might be overthinking these things. And these are all little tweaks that are personal preference, really. I like to group everything I've done, toggle it on and off, just to see where we started and where we ended up. So that just about does it for this video, guys. I hope I've managed to bring something insightful and uh, maybe you've learned something with the Capture One workflow there. I know not many people use Capture One kind of outside the sort of studio commercial photography realm so that might uh, help make some people aware of this piece of software. It is the next day after the cancelled shoot so I'm just trying to scramble something together for tomorrow morning to hopefully do a super quick turnaround and get the shoot done and retouched and out there by sort of like mid-afternoon tomorrow. So Wish me luck and I hope you'll join me in the next video.